What's up guys? Welcome back to the review space and today on Versus we take a look at a couple of spawn action figuzzles. Um, <laughs> which one of these figs is the best? Let's begin! Alright, so this one over here is the spawn Dark Ages figure. Let's take a... Let's uh, look at this one first. Uh, ages 5 and older, top left. Very cool looking card. It's a little bit different from the usual spawn figures. It is Dark Ages. Sweet! And look at that. I love the carded fig uh, figure. It just looks like a very well packaged um, action figure. I love it. It's, it's awesome. There's a couple of like severed heads or I guess masks? Or are they... are those heads or masks? I don't even know. It says two snap-on masks. Okay, so one of the ma snap-on masks would probably be this one. And then a hooded veil would be this one. Uh, where's the second mask? Very cool looking figure. Although I'm kind of afraid that just, I mean, just looking at the inside of the box, uh, taking a closer look inside, it's like, it, it's, it's almost, it doesn't seem like she's got any articulation. Like her hand, like at the elbows, looks like you can't bend it, and on her knees, doesn't look like you can bend her knees either. So it looks like she's got limited articulation. I'm a little afraid, but there's a lot of detail with this uh, character. Just a well-packaged, uh, you know what I'm saying, action figure. <laughs> it's completely mint, you know, sealed. Alright, in the back of the card it says uh, you got Spawn, the Black Heart. Get your heart beating. Oh wow, the Spawn Dark Ages figure looks awesome. It's from, oh, it's from Series 14. Okay. That's what it is. Series 14. Awesome. Wow, look at that. It looks really cool. Alright, the Necromancer. You got, uh, what else you got? Mandarin Spawn, the Scarlet Edge. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yes, yes, that's um, like the Chinese Spawn basically. Viper King. Cool. Uh, what is this guy? The Terment Tormentor? Tormentor? Igu what is that? Iguantus? Iguantus and Tuscadon. Huh. Alright, reading her profile. The Necromancer. Perhaps the most powerful witch on Earth. Or of any dimension. She leads her own army of the dead through different planes and holes through occult warps. At the moment, she is the counts counsel and second in command for Spawn, the Black Heart. She is a master of the Black Arts and can morph into her, into her, morph her form into anyone or anything. Her power to speak and use the dead has given her power like no other woman has ever had in the Dark Ages. Wow, and she's got yeah, she's carrying the severed severed head of this person, decapitation style. Very dark character. Um, keep in mind that this figure is basically. Ages 5 and up. <laughs> Ages 5 and older. I love it. So you have these very adult themed, you know, you know, relatively more mature action figures. But, you know, basically a 5 year old kid can have it, which is awesome. Look, look for these other titles from McFarlane Toys Austin Powers, Movie Maniacs, Tiffany, Chucky, The Crow, Pumpkinhead, uh, you know, obviously uh, Jason, or. My, uh, Michael Myers, actually. Sorry about that. Yellow Submarine, Ringo and Jeremy, Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> Techno Spawn. All right, next up, we take a look at Exoskeleton Spawn. Oh man, I thought this was a pretty cool-looking figure as well. This is actually the white colored variation, the white and gray. All right. There's different colored versions of the same figures actually, so they'd have like the black normal spawn and then they'd have like white and gold versions of certain figures. Um, he's got removable armor with bendable spine. Alright. And yes, this is from the McFarlane Toys uh, Deluxe Edition. Actually, this thing's kind of falling apart. Uh, it's fallen off. Instructions. Uh, push down and jaw opens and closes. Spin spine fits into the back, clip on the leg armor, and the claw arm snaps on and claw slides up and down. I mean, the, the, the card itself is a basic, you know, that light blue, sky blue mixed with a lightning bolt. 
so the same typical design. So can't wait to just open it up and you know take a closer look. At the back, you got the ultra action figures. Look at that. Series 4. You got the Max, Cygor, <laughs> She Spawn, Clown 2, Exoskeleton Spawn. That's the one that okay, so this is the uh, normal version with the uh, black and red uh, color. This is the uh, uh, white variation. And then Shadowhawk, which I think is the coolest looking figure out of all these guys. He looks really cool. Look at that. Shadowhawk. He just looks really awesome. Spawn. Uh, these are the other series. Series 3, you know. Exoskeleton Spawn. What's the deal with this guy? Spawn disguises himself in, in, in this exoskeleton armor as a means to breach the territory of violators and other creatures of the Darklands. By camouflaging his appearance, Spawn can attack his enemies off guard while at the same time using parts of his costume as weapons of defense. Interesting. How interesting. So he is basically in the Darklands when he's in this form. Alright, and there's the rest of the uh, other action figures. Young Blood, Wetworks, and Series 1. Alright. This is from 1996. Yes. So I think this is about maybe three years older uh, compared to the uh, um, the Necromancer figure. Both figures stand out a lot. I'm gonna have to give it to Spawn of Dark Ages, uh, the Necromancer. She looks really cool. Um, so this particular... It, it just looks very display worthy. So this particular carded figure takes this one. Alright! Both figures are definitely awesome and definitely display worthy and we'll take a closer look at these figures. Why don't we open them up? Both of them. Let's open it up right now. Oh yeah! Okay, Doki. So now both figures are out of the packaging. Necromancer and Exoskeleton Spawn. And obviously they have pretty darn good balancing actually. First up, uh, let's take a look at the Necromancer. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, holy smoke, look at that. Very well detailed figure. Great color scheme. Very, very well painted. I mean, oh, wow. She's got like this very like leathery looking wings. It almost folds up like a butterfly. And the plastic itself has a, a pseudo transparent effect to it. And so it, that's kind of cool. And then there's like different kind of coloring. So it's got like green. You know, like a light yellow, beige yellow kind of color. You know, I'm saying light, very uh, light orange. And the main thing about this figure is that not only is it well detailed, it's got a lot of like little accessories that you can add to the figure. And you can see that she's got a lot of things going on right now, and that's not even like the complete package. So let's take a look at what she has. Okay. So the figure itself has, she's got an owl mask here, right there in her face. So it's an owl mask. She's got a hood over here. So it's kind of like a, not, well, kind of like a rubbery hood, you know, it's, it's a very um, flexible, you know what I'm saying, kind of plastic. Okay. The owl mask goes over her face and... Let's see, I'm just going to try and take it off. Oh, whoops. Her sword just fell. There it is. Owl mask. She, yes, she, she can hold a sword on her right hand. And a very, very cool looking, very well detailed sword. Right here. And uh, let's actually take a closer look at that. Awesome detail on it. It's, like, it's got like a green serpent surrounding it. And... I love the spikes. It's got a jagged kind of uh, jagged edge to the blade. Very, very awesome. Oh man. All right. So what else? She has a oh, she's got a necklace. It's actually a chain necklace, but it's attached to her. It's actually attached to her chest, or yeah. So you can't actually remove it. It's got kind of a cross symbol on it. Not exactly a cross, but 
She's got a choker, green and black. This is her face. Her young, youthful face. Her eyes are a little bit messed up, though. It's kind of like cross-eyed or just... She's like looking at different directions. Her right eye is like looking downwards. Her uh, left eye is looking forward. Bright red lipstick. She even has like some teeth. Paint job. So very cool like facial features. Her hair is uh, kind of like a brown. Darker brown. And now uh, she's holding a severed elf's head. This is supposed to be uh, the head of an elf. That's been decapitated. That is pretty cool. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Eyeball pop popping out of his left socket and everything. Wow, that is intense. This is the kind of action figures we got as kids. You know what I'm saying? That is dope. And it just fell from her hand. So, um, we're going to segue into articulation. Because... She is well detailed, as you can see. I mean, it's, it's, it is a well detailed figure. But when it comes to articulation, when it comes to posability, and just the way her figure is made, it's actually quite... Yeah, it's not amazing, you know what I mean? Like, her articulation, she doesn't have a lot of posability. Her, her hands, they can barely hold the items and the accessories. Um, they tend to fall like right off her so she's really a display piece um, the necromancer this character is more of a display item than anything else um, she, uh, she's meant to be just she, she's not really meant to be played with you know it's more of an adult collector type of figure as it's very evident by the amount of detail on her I mean look at that it's just amazing how much the sculpt of the figure has so much going on it, look at the detail on her boot on her legs it's just wow it's amazing right there and her wings but yeah I mean let's look at the articulation first of all I mean she can move her she can twist her head you know she can rotate it it's not even her head like from her neck actually rotates so her hand goes up and down so you can rotate it same with her uh, right right arm and that's it you know you can't twist you can't bend it at the elbows you can't uh well you can rotate the, the hand so that's pretty cool ah oh, that surprised me that you can actually oh you know twist and rotate the uh hand but and her, her legs uh, look at her legs okay that's it that's literally all you can do she it can her legs barely move very limited so you know, I do like her attire though. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of... <clears throat> there's certain key points and, you know, key details in the figure that makes it extra spicy. But, uh, again, I mean, uh, you know, not a well-articulated fig. She's just meant to be for display purposes. So, it's kind of like that's the trade-off with these for some of these McFarlane figures just do not have a lot of articulation for some reason and she can actually in sort of wrap her wings around her like a protective shield again she reminds me so much of Carrigan from Starcraft that evil character that alien zerg queen queen of blades very very cool and she does have awesome accessories. She also came with this little dragon. Uh, this was uh, labeled as a dragon familiar, whatever it is. A dragon character. Dragon familiar. Yes. Uh, this thing has no articulation. It's actually very, uh, very stiff. It's just a... It's kind of just like a small like model of this creature. It is well detailed though. You know, again, there's a lot of detailing here. McFarlane Toys, they did a really good job of at least, you know, modeling and the detailing of the actual characters. The sculpt is just well, well done. I don't think it can move. I think there is, there's probably a limited amount of articulation. Like, you can probably move its hands, but I don't, I'm not even going to force it. It looks kind of fragile. Its leg, or not, its tail is supposed to wrap around her leg, I think. If I'm not mistaken. It's supposed to actually wrap around her, kind of like a snake. 
Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> and oh yeah, and there's just like this this mask here. It's a hag mask. So another um uh accessory, small piece of accessory. It's really cool though. It's got a lot of things going on. It's got some hair, some tufts of hair. This ugly, hideous, withered face of a hag. And as you can already imagine, it's supposed to go over her face like a mask, like a Halloween mask. Oh man, look at that. Oh. <laughs> so she went from being a zerg, or she went from being a queen, very good looking character, into this ugh, hideous looking freak of nature. Again, awesome, awesome detailing. Very well detailed figure. I love it. The, the color, the design, the sculpt is just phenomenal. Too bad about the articulation though. Not a lot of uh, articulation there, so... Okay. She also came with a leaflet. Yeah, should we look at it? Yeah, okay, might as well just check it out. So, right, what, what do we got here? Okay, so Spawn, Austin Powers, The Beatles, Ozzy Osbourne, Techno Spawn. Oh, Metal Gear Solid, look at that. Oh, why was this not advertised on the card? Wow, the original game available February 99. Oh my gosh. Tactical Espionage Action, Metal Gear Solid, the first game from like 1998. Liquid Snake, Vulcan Raven, Ninja, Psycho Mantis, Meryl Silverberg. Revolver, Ocelot, Sniper Wolf, Solid Snake. That's really cool. Yup, that's the 90s, kitties. It was awesome then. And I kind of miss it a little bit, but... Uh, and this is the Necromancer. This is the... Uh, kind of showing some information. Yeah, claws can rotate, sword fits in the right hand, dragon familiar, all that stuff. Severed elf head. There's a Viper King. Wow, he looks cool. Snakes can be bent in different position. Oh, these are the other characters in this uh, new, uh, Spawn Dark Ages. Mandarin Spawn. Oh, I didn't know Mandarin Spawn was that old. Wow. Oh, uh, that's a cool one. Spawn Series 14. Spawn the Black Heart. Oh, wow, that's cool. Iguantus and Tuscadorn. <laughs> Tormentor. Oh, if they had a Spawn movie, it should be in the Spawn Dark Ages. These characters are just so wicked. Sin City. Dawn. Death Skull. Danger Girl. Collector's Club. Spawn Collector's Club. What's that? Cogliostro? Cogliostro? Alright, so that's it for this leaflet. It's just a, you know, ad advertisement, really. Okay, so next up we have, oh boy, an even older figure. BAM! Exoskeleton Spawn! Sweet! Okay, so what's the deal with this figure? He's got a lot of things going on too, just in terms of detailing and like accessories. Where do I begin? Well, first of all, the figure itself. Let's actually remove his uh, um, armor first. Actually, uh, can I remove it? Should I remove it? Yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. He's got all these little things attached to him. There you go. Okay. All right. Oops. So this is the base figure. And he's got green eyes. I like it. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of color uh, variation though. Like there's not a lot of different colors going on. It's just kind of a white mixed with gray. And like little spots of gray and you know, just variations of gray on the on the figure. But I like the figure. I like the actual like his pose and just the sculpt itself is very well detailed. Very well muscled character. I'm not even sure if this is Spawn himself, like the actual character with the, with a cape, or just another type of character, another variation of Spawn. He's got a lot of spikes, of course, his legs, 
skull motif. Very, very sweet looking character. And again, this is the white colored version. There's the normal black version, you know what I'm saying? And his articulation actually is really... Again, this is, you know, talking about the 90s articulation here. So you can kind of twist and rotate his uh, his torso from his lower torso. His le uh, his head you can kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying, tilt his head like that, rotate it. And his hand from the shoulders, they rotate, they yeah, move, it, move it up and down. And then at the elbows, you can... Uh, you can bend it, so bendable elbows like that. You can't twist his hand though. You can't twist his uh, his actual his actual hands. That would have been cool. And his legs. That's pretty much it for his legs. It's actually, yeah, they just kind of move back and forth like that. It's actually quite limited. You can't even bend his knees are all his knees are already bent. His legs, but you can't. They, they don't have any articulation either. You can't stretch them out or anything. So he's kind of left in this pose. You know what I'm saying? Very limited articulation. But it is for kids, so... And he doesn't have any... A lot of these figures don't have any uh, holes at the bottom of their feet for a stand. Although the, it should stand on its own pretty good, yeah. It's got good um, balance anyway, but... Alright, so he's got these accessories that you should attach to him. So he's got the spine thing that attaches to his back. Actually, we'll... Oh, let's do it right now. It is kind of awkward. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like a strange, like, insect-like kind of vertebrate, vertebrate creature type of thing. You know, just a... Uh, I guess they're supposed to be... They're, they're supposed to be bones or something. He's got this leg thing, it attaches to his right- Oh, ow! That's spiky. It attaches to his right leg, so... It's kind of like armor, you know what I'm saying? It's like battle armor, pretty much. They attach to his legs like so. And... whoops. Hold on, and then his- he's got this claw thing too. Although, it does- it did fall off, so it's got a tendency to- it should attach to his right hand somewhere here. There you go. All right, come on. Eh, eh. It should attach. It should attach. There you go. And this one is probably the most uh, difficult here. This is the head. So let's take a look at this uh, bone head mask thing first. It kind of opens up. It's kind of almost like a crocodile's face. The way it's shaped, or, or actually more similar to Violator, I should say. So it sort of goes over his his head, and it reminds me of like kind of like a tribal mask kind of thing, and it goes over like that. That's pretty cool, and then it closes, and it protects his face. I guess it's supposed to be a protective thing. And that's his weaponry, that's sort of his armament. He's more of a defensive looking character. It's all about defense. Like if this guy was a character in a video game, he's, his defense would be through the roof, but he probably wouldn't be able to move very much. He wouldn't be very fast or anything. Okay. And yeah, his, his claws here is actually supposed to move back and forth like that, so. That's pretty cool, this one's actually a bit more bendy. Alright, so that's the uh, exoskeleton spawn. It really is an exoskeleton. I'm a lot of bone um, accessory, you know, uh, spiky spiky uh, ligaments going. It's pretty cool, although it does take up a lot of space. You know, especially like the tail area here. This part here. It's actually really bulky, you know what I mean? So, you're gonna need a lot of space for this figure when you're standing it on the shelf. It takes up even more space than uh, the Necromancer. But both figures are actually, I mean, they sort of have... These are both figures that you're gonna need to, you know, open up a lot of shelf space because they take up a lot of um, real estate in your bedroom, wherever, you know, your, your shelves. In terms of aesthetics, she's got more color, the Necromancer does, and there's more things going on here in terms of just 
appearance wise aesthetically display wise she's got more things going on uh, her wings the amount of detail on her armor her costume uh, the mask different masks that she has you know even the stuff like the severed elf's head you know just little things like that that kind of make her more morbid and more of a dark it feels more like a dark character and I think exoskeleton spawn is more he's more of a comic book looking type of you know a concept art type of character overall I'm gonna have to give it to necromancer I think she is the better figure and the better choice overall yeah all right guys so that's it for this episode of versus and uh, thank you for watching uh, the review space you know what i'm saying go check out the rest of the channel comment rate subscribe all that good stuff and well we've got a lot more reviews coming up all right so stay tuned and until next time ciao